Hi everyone, uh, my name is uh, David Villar. I work as a professor of pharmacology at the University in Colombia. Welcome to this uh, presentation on local anesthetics, which are really a group of drugs that should be included in most uh, pro protocols to provide analgesia. We're going to uh, provide some examples of the different applications of local anesthetics. And for the most part, we could say that their uh, value is uh, largely underestimated as they can provide almost complete analgesia with very little or no side effects. Uh, these are really the only uh, drugs that totally block the transmission of uh, noxious uh, or painful signals into the spinal cord. And by doing so, they're going to prevent the process of uh, central sensitization that we alluded uh, in previous uh, videos. And pain will be easier to control when the patient wakes up from an anesthesia. On the next slide, we're going to uh, review some papers in which they use uh, local anesthetics for each one of the applications uh, listed here. Uh, the first one, uh, infiltration. This is uh, used uh, basically to provide uh, an incisional block and sometimes uh, uh, relatively high volumes of the uh, anesthetics are necessary and, uh, and that's the reason why we combine it with epinephrine. So the duration of action is uh, prolonged and the uh, drug doesn't go into the bloodstream so rapidly. Now, with, the, uh, with regards to a splash block, this is when the drug is uh, directed to the site of interest, uh, for example, a root canal, uh, when we do a tooth extraction, or adjacent to an ovarian uh, ligament when we do an ovarian hysterectomy. With, re with regards to field blocks, these are the typical C-sections that you might have seen in cows. And when these are done correctly, we basically block all the nerve tracts that innervate an entire a body uh, region distal to the line of injection sites. With uh, topical anesthesia, uh, in this case, the drug must be capable of penetrating through either through an open wound or the skin or a mucous membrane. Uh, you might have seen those uh, lidocaine creams that are used uh, prior to placing an IV catheter. Uh, epidural anesthesia involves the injection site, in, uh, excuse me, involves the injection of the local anesthetics uh, in the space surrounding the spinal cord. Uh, the site of action is supposedly those of spinal nerve roots, and but maybe some of the drug uh, can also diffuse into the spinal cord itself and have some additional effects that way. And finally, we can use the local anesthetics to provide analgesia with systemic infusions. And when these are done, uh, these are usually combined with uh, other analgesic drugs like opioids or uh, ketamine. Uh, here is the first, the first example in which they use an incisional block with uh, bupivacaine in dogs undergoing ciliotomy or a laparotomy, if you like that uh, term better. Uh, there were uh, 60 da dogs that were uh, randomly allocated to, to four groups that received either uh, preoperative uh, bupivacaine before the midline incision, postoperative before the skin closure, and these two were compared with uh, two control groups that were given either preoperative or postoperative uh, saline. The dogs, uh, as you can see, also received uh, the opioid uh, meperidine. And the conclusion of the study was that uh, preoperative uh, bupivacaine was associated with uh, significantly lower pain scores, and they used a numerical uh, rating scale. And another finding was that they, there was a significantly lower need for opioid administration uh, in the postoperative uh, period. Now, an important thing is that this uh, local anesthetics, uh, when they're injected into a wound site, uh, they don't delay uh, uh, healing, which is a concern that maybe some veterinarians uh, may have. So they can uh, rest easy that this is uh, the delaying, uh, the healing process is not really uh, affected. Now the next uh, study, uh, this one again reinforces the concept of giving the drug before the surgery and also uh, the, the interest of uh, using different ones to attain uh, what we call a multimodal uh, enhanced effect. In this case, uh, the positive control was uh, using epidural administration of morphine, uh, which probably nobody uses for uh, male castrations. And in this study, uh, the two groups that receive either the epidural morphine or the intratesticular uh, bupivacaine had uh, much lower uh, postoperative uh, pain scores than the dogs that uh, receive uh, a combination of injectable opioids. 
and the non-steroidal uh, uh, anti-inflammatory uh, carprofen. And we could say that uh, because the pain impulse was completely blocked in the intertesticular group, the brain was not realizing that this that the uh, spermatic cord was being crushed and uh, crushing injuries are really uh, very painful probably some of the most painful stimulus uh, of any type of surgeries and uh, they also concluded that uh, even the intratesticular group was superior uh, to the epidural uh, injection of morphine which is kind of the gold standard uh, and the reason was that they found less dogs that uh, required uh, rescue analgesia up, and they also had uh, lower uh, pain scores and the level of cortisol released after the surgery uh, was also lower. Now in this uh, next study, uh, they evaluated the effects of uh, maxillary and alveolar uh, nerve blocks in cats undergoing dental extractions. All the cats uh, received uh, systemic uh, buprenorphine, med meditomidine, and acepromazine. And they used a composite uh, pain scale before and for four hours uh, following the extractions. Uh, the results were that uh, pain during and after the extraction was lower in the group that received the local anesthetics. And also that uh, during the surgery, the heart rate, the blood pressure, and the minimum alveolar concentration of isofluorine that was needed uh, was lower in the group with the uh, local anesthetics. And these are kind of an indicator that the animals were not really feeling the pain during the, the extraction uh, procedure. Obviously, if you don't apply the local anesthetics, those uh, cats uh, uh, will still feel better after three or four days uh, without having all those uh, painful teeth. But the question is that in the meantime, uh, they're going to be quite painful. So. This type of studies, again, reinforce the idea of the importance of uh, providing as best uh, preemptive analgesia as, uh, we, comp as we possibly uh, can. Now, an interesting application, which uh, many uh, veterinarians are probably not aware of, is using the local anesthetics uh, diluted one-on-one -on -one with saline uh, to irrigate the peritoneal cavity in dogs that are going and undergoing uh, ovario hysterectomy. In this case, they instilled the local anesthetic, uh, bupivacaine, after the surgery was completed. And basically, they were, they, obviously, they were comparing these animals to a control group that also uh, received opioids and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. So the bottom line was how much uh, are you enhancing the analgesia by using these uh, local anesthetics in the peritoneal cavity. This is uh, actually uh, widely used in human medicine. And in this case, the conclusion was that the, the bupivacaine group, uh, which is uh, uh, longer lasting than uh, lidocaine, uh, provided significantly lower pain scores compared to the saline and the lidocaine group. This is, uh, as I say, is something that is usually not contemplated in most uh, ovarian hysterectomy protocols. And as you can see here, it's an application of the local anesthetics that uh, veterinary should be uh, uh, doing more frequently. One of the issues uh, of applying uh, infiltration anal analgesia is that sometimes very high amounts of the local anesthetics are necessary and if they were to be absorbed rapidly there is always the risk of uh, creating uh, toxicity. So you may come across formulations that combine the use of lidocaine with epinephrine and this is one of those studies in which uh, they look at the impact of adrenaline on the kinetics of uh, lidocaine injected in the paravertebral uh, brachial uh, plexus, uh, which you may need to do if you were to amputate the front leg of uh, this dog. So they injected eight, eight dogs uh, with the usual uh, two milligram per kilogram lidocaine at the spaces uh, of the C6, 6, 7, and the junction of C8 and T1. And then they collected the blood to measure uh, the concentration of lidocaine for the next three hours. And what they found is uh, something similar uh, to what you might see on this graph, which is uh, actually I took it from another study. And I just wanted to uh, illustrate the point of uh, flip-flop kinetics here. When you use uh, adrenaline um, combined with uh, lidocaine, basically you are uh, slowing the absorption rate of lidocaine. Uh, so you don't really reach such high concentrations of, uh, of the drug in a short time. 
and consequently there is uh, less potential for systemic uh, toxicity. And in addition uh, to being safer, you also prolong the duration of the local anesthesia because the lidocaine uh, will be at the site of the injection uh, a lot longer. So as you can see on this graph, the decline uh, or the elimination of uh, a part of the lidocaine uh, uh, curve is uh, less pronounced because lidocaine is being slowly absorbed from the tissues. Now, another way of uh, looking at the multimodal uh, effect of analgesic uh, drugs is uh, looking at how much uh, is, um, of the gas anesthesia is necessary during an intervention. So in this study, they use a combo of uh, lidocaine and ketamine and compare it with each drug given alone. And as you can see uh, on the lower graph, uh, the combination of the two, the two drugs uh, decreased the minimum, the minimum alveolar concentration of uh, sabofluorine by almost uh, 62%. Uh, notice that uh, both drugs were initially provided as a bolus, and then they were followed with a constant uh, rate of infusion. And this is basically done to keep the concentrations steady uh, during the entire anesthetic uh, period. On this is, uh, other study, they used a computerized uh, pressure uh, algometer uh, to determine the pain threshold in dogs that were subjected to a pressure stimulus. And the idea was to determine which concentrations of the ketamine and lidocaine will raise that uh, uh, threshold level. This was a crossover study with six dogs, and the three groups were given either a bolus of ketamine followed by a CR CRI, or a bolus of ketamine and lidocaine followed by CRI of both uh, drugs and a group of, uh, with a bolus of ketamine followed by a higher uh, uh, dose rate of uh, ketamine of 50 micrograms per kilogram per minute instead of uh, the 30 micrograms uh, per kilogram per minute. So if we look at the results, uh, they found that the minimum serum concentrations of ketamine that produce uh, analgesia were between 100 and 200 nanograms uh, per mil, which is similar to what uh, is found in humans. But unlike, uh, unlike uh, humans, uh, dogs need a higher constant rate of infusion uh, to attain those uh, concentrations. So this is a good example why you cannot always extrapolate doses from one species to another. Uh, at the higher uh, CRI of ketamine, the dogs also develop some of the anesthetic effects of the drug, uh, like uh, disorientation, swaying of the head, salivation, hyperactivity. And the most interesting thing was that uh, when they brought uh, lidocaine on board uh, with the lower doses of ketamine, not only they produced similar uh, nociceptive uh, thresholds as the higher concentrations of ketamine, but they also prevented the side effects of ketamine. So the analgesia effects uh, were um, very short-lived. Um, as you can see, they disappeared within uh, 20 minutes of ceasing the, the constant rate of infusion. And obviously that's the reason why they need to be constantly infused. And the conclusion of this study that was uh, all three treatments increased the mechanical threshold for pain and uh, therefore they provided anti nociceptive effects, uh, but also that the addition of lidocaine was uh, recommended uh, uh, to attain a, a multimodal approach, which is always a better way of uh, to controlling uh, pain. Now, as a final slide, there is always a controversy as to whether lidocaine should be used in cats or entirely avoided. Uh, it seems to have a bad reputation but when you search the literature, it doesn't really suggest any particular sensitivity of cats compared with other species like dogs. Uh, the rationale is that uh, CRI of uh, lidocaine causes a more pronounced cardiovascular depression than uh, equipotent uh, doses of isofluorine, and that normal doses uh, that are used in infiltration and blocks could potentially kill a cat if, if they were uh, given uh, intravenously. And this is not really the case if you don't really exceed the therapeutic doses, which are usually below uh, 10 milligrams uh, per kilogram. If we look at this uh, study in which they compare the central nervous system and the cardiovascular uh, toxicity of lidocaine and bupivacaine in cats, they were uh, infusing actually a very whopping dose of up to 16 uh, milligrams per kilogram per minute 
until until the minimal uh, until the mean arterial pressure uh, dropped to uh, uh, 10 millimeters of mercury, and they call that the cardiotoxic endpoint at which they started the resuscitation uh, protocols. And I'll, I'll have to say that uh, they were success, successful uh, resuscitating all the 10 cats. And they concluded that the mean convulsive dose was uh, 12 milligrams per kilogram, which is about three to four times lower than the cardiotoxic uh, dose. In other words, uh, you may see uh, tremors and convulsions before you see major changes in heart uh, function. Now, if we look at the more common scenario in which you use uh, lidocaine as an IV bolus and you follow it with a CRI, which is what was done on this other study, uh, they found that uh, lidocaine causes a dose-dependent decrease in isoflurane requirements. Uh, they went from a steady concentration of 1 to 10 uh, micrograms per mil of um, lidocaine which is really what you want to achieve as part of a balanced anesthetic technique. And basically at the higher concentrations of 10 micrograms per mil, there was a 59 reduction in the uh, minimal alveolar concentration of isoflurane that was needed uh, to anesthetize those cats. And when they look at the encephalographic uh, recordings, they found no activity suggestive of uh, seizuring or convulsing. Now, the problem is that uh, you need to lower those uh, concentrations of isoflurane that you are providing because if you don't do so uh, and you are combining with uh, uh, lidocaine with isoflurane, you will definitely cause severe uh, cardiovascular depression. And at that point, you'll probably have to discontinue giving both drugs and initiate uh, supportive uh, measures. So it is important to keep in mind that if you plan to use uh, typical isoflurane concentrations, you may want to avoid using lidocaine altogether. This was uh, my final slide. Uh, we have tried to cover a lot of information in a very short time. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. So until next time, bye-bye uh, for now.